Hey you all, Farmer Jesse here, going to talk today about one of my favorite crops, summer squash, um, and how we, the sort of techniques we've developed for keeping it bug free all summer. So let's do it. First things first, if you're not subscribed to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you are subscribed, you're awesome. Okay, so wanted to do this quick crop specific uh, breakdown today because I know that a lot of people love growing summer, summer squash. For us, it's uh, not the highest profitable crop in, that we grow by a long shot, but it is a really fun crop. It's one of my favorite. I think the plant is beautiful. Um, when you have it early and you can have it late, it sells really well. Um, so we grow a lot of summer squash. It also has a really extensive root system. It goes something like four feet into the soil. And, and also it has a very sensitive root system, which we'll talk about. But in terms of just like adding a lot of good root carbon to the soil, um, I love it. So let me talk about the whole strategy for having summer squash. It could be zucchini, yellow squash, crookneck, all the things for the whole summer. And it starts really with starts. All right, so let's take you through the whole process. We start all of our cucurbits. So it can be cucumbers, it can be squash, all of that in soil balls. And the reason that we do the soil balls is because you don't want all these roots growing into other roots like they do sort of in these, right? These roots are all gonna touch. You don't want that with these because they're very sensitive root systems. We put them in these soil balls and we just put a seed in, cover it up and grow it out until it, we never move this. We never, these soil balls are not touching each other. We grow that out until it's about double this size before we put it out in the field. Sometimes you can get some cucumber beetle damage in the greenhouse. Um, in which case, if you see that, you need to scoop the cucumber beetles off and cover it with some row cover. So we grow them pretty tall in the greenhouse. And then before they go out to the field, we actually dip them in compost slurry. So we make a vermicompost slurry. I've talked about this in other videos. Um, we use that. We put it in a bottom watering tray, just a little bit of water and a little bit of vermicompost. And we soak the bottoms of these until they're fully saturated in that compost slurry. Uh, because that's going to inoculate it with good microbes. It's going to give it the start that it needs. And these have to be moist to, to go into the soil and to succeed. So that's the first part. Next, they go out into the field, uh, into well-prepped soil that's well-drained, that has a decent amount of fertility. Um, but they go into a, the field, they get watered in really nicely, and then they get row cover. The row cover is not touching the plants. I've seen how cucumber beetles can actually eat through even stuff like this row cover. This is the insect protect net. So they go out into the field under the row cover. Note about row cover, this insect protect net is ridiculously expensive. It works really well, but it is ridiculously expensive. But if you're gonna use even like a really light row cover, you have to keep in mind that it will trap heat. Even these will trap heat, but they'll trap less heat than other light row covers. Um, so ideally you have this, if not, keep it watered often, like water it all the time, like just mist it, cool it down all the time because it will, if they get too hot, you will lose your squash, especially in those first like week or two. Right now there's cucurbits in here, there's at cucumbers and we'll let those grow and the same with the squash, we'll let it grow until it starts flowering and then we'll remove the cover. And I just want to say, whenever you're planting them, make sure to not disturb those roots. Don't try and crush that soil ball into the soil. Just kind of set it in a hole, cover it, and then get it good and watered in. And so you may be wondering if you have healthy soil, why do you need the insect net? And the answer is uh, because you need time for the plant to establish itself. There may be all sorts of abiotic stresses you can't really contend with. So uh, excessive rain, excessive heat, uh, cold weather. You want to give that transplant time to establish itself inside of the insect netting um, before insects really have a chance to go after it. Because if it's a slow establishment period, that's going to mean that the plant is a little bit weak to defend itself. Um, I also do like hardening the plants off before they go out here where possible. Soil blocks help. If you put them in cell trays, they tend to not be as hardened off. That's why I like soil blocks. That's why I like those soil balls. Um, they, the plants just are kind of automatically a little bit more hardened off anyway. But in this situation, you know, you want to keep them protected till they're well established. And like I said, till they're flowering. Uh, and as they grow, if you see that they're discolored or if you see that they are getting attacked by pests, that means they don't have the full slate of nutrients, access to the full slate of nutrients that they need. And it may be a good opportunity to spray them with a foliar feed. Um, there's lots of, if you can tell what the deficiency is uh, based on leaves and all the information that's online, um, then you can do it individually. I also like using, and so like KNF has a lot of good preps, Korean natural farming. Um, 
for specific deficiencies you can approach, you know, based on the crop. Um, for instance, we're using water-soluble calcium to approach some calcium deficiencies that we're seeing in our tomatoes. Also, one a product that I like is the Brant's Organic Orchard Mix, I want to say. I'll put it down below. Um, but it's an Omri-approved product, and it just has a really good slate of micronutrients. Um, so that's one I often use in small quantities just to give the plant, since I don't know maybe what the deficiency is, just give the plant its full opportunity. And that's just ways to kind of keep the plant going throughout the growing season and just watch it, monitor it, make sure that it's not uh, showing signs of deficiency. That's like yellowing or bugs or any, you know, maybe some if you see any signs of disease or anything like that. For harvest, I like them at about this size. Um, right when the flower's kind of able to fall off that easily, um, I use a knife and I just kind of gently do that. You can also twist them off or pop them off, but what I find is that if you do that, sometimes, especially on zucchini, you'll actually pop off the, the top and then it becomes unsellable because it won't last that long. So I like them this big, maybe just even an inch or so bigger. Um, yep. Now we don't use any sprays or pesticides. We certainly could, but we don't. Um, we feel like the soil health and the quality of the soil and the quality of the start and keeping it covered until it starts flowering gives that plant enough of a chance to succeed. So these are relatively young in comparison to the ones I was sitting next to at the beginning of this video, um, but they're already producing really well and I've seen zero squash bug damage. Uh, usually by this point in the year, it's July, we will start to see a lot of eggs and start to see a lot of bugs. But through this technique, we've been able to for the most part, get away with most of the season, if not the entire season, without having any issues with squash bugs or losing plants to them. Same with, this technique also works for vine borers and a lot of the other stuff. All right, that's it for me, harvest day. Uh, like this video if you like this video. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if I missed anything. Uh, again, it's not gonna guarantee you no bugs, but it's gonna give you the best chance at success all summer. And with summer squash, I really love, you have it early, you kind of skip it when everybody else has it, and then you have it late and you'll do well with it at market and restaurants and in your kitchen. Thanks you all. We'll see you later. Bye.